welcome back footy fans and if you'll notice i just did the intro just the tiniest bit because before we get started with this draft and off season is slash season preview of the afl coming up i have a huge announcement to come in i've had a discussion with ross the main host of fourth and long and unfortunately due to kind of heavy work schedule he has decided to change this channel this channel will officially after this episode become the donnie's disposal youtube channel i have to thank him greatly for giving me this possibility to make this channel full on footy mode it will be not only afl aflw but as you've noticed in my off-season supporter series, I'm going to start doing some state league reviews as well. So this is going to be as much footy as I can possibly get in on this channel. So unfortunately, Ross will not be around as much, but he's still staying on as a producer and keeping the channel going and looking as beautiful as it always does. So now that we've had our announcement in, let's get into it. As you can see, I have got a nice little panel hopping on where we will first introduce a couple of really good mates of mine from around the country, finding himself in cold California. We have Rick Shaibani out there. Rick, how is everything going? Are you staying warm enough in California? You're on mute, sir. You're on mute. <laughs> My mistake, fellas. Uh, yeah, it's very uh, unusually cold right now, um, especially for the first week of March. But um, yeah, no, it's it's been good. Dragons are going to be resuming training in a couple of weeks. So we're getting excited about to start practicing again and uh, got a new logo, got a new look. You know, it's it's exciting times around for local footy. And of course, we've got AFL. We've got you know, the season coming up soon. So it's it's going to be really fun. And can't wait to sink my teeth into it and get full blown into footy mode again. You know, I, I'm pretty keen on gridiron basketball. I don't watch as much as I used to, but you know, it's getting full back into footy mode and that's always fun. Fantastic. And then the magic of the internet to jump across the country to Georgia and the two founders of the Grovetown Pirates and the awesome YouTube channel, the Steez and the Don. Steez and Don, gentlemen, thank you for joining me. How are, how's everything down in lovely Georgia? Hey. Yes, sir. I think we're getting a little bit of a delay on this audio. I'm not sure if the audio is something messed up there, but I'm not getting much of it. So can I get you guys to try one more time to try to talk? Yeah, that or he's away from the microphone. Hey, the Don, can you try it one time? One time, too, just say something just to see if we're having it. I, I got you, but for some reason, I'm not getting Steez at all. I'm seeing him talk, but I'm not hearing him. What about me? Can you hear me now? I'm better. Now I can hear you. Hmm. Okay. Bingo. All right. That's what's up. Sorry about that. But uh, everything's pretty good this way, man. Uh, it's always good. Like I said, uh, I was saying, appreciate the opportunity allowing us to come on here. I um, always like to have and be able to converse with different people and who have the same mindset and love food as much as we do. And uh, obviously, y'all are more experienced than we are. So we like to be able to learn, especially from draft experts and things like that, that uh, we're still learning how to get into it because we know we're still a new channel. So. Appreciate that. That's really weird. The microphone is really weird. It's catching. It's catching one or the other. This is really, really weird. I don't know what it is. We'll have to figure something out. We'll, 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 we'll jump over to it. As you can see, the man, the myth, the legend that is my draft expert from Rookie Me Central, Pete Williams, in his car on his way to Adelaide. Pete, we're going to try to make this quick for you since I know you've only got so much battery. How's everything going? And why do you find yourself on the way to Adelaide? Yeah. So. Uh... Good to be back on again, Donnie. Obviously, uh, been a bit removed from the uh, end of the men's season or the men's draft, uh, and we started into the women's season. So, uh, yeah, I'm en route to Adelaide to basically go catch up on the uh, sample women's games in person, just get basically stock up on some photos. Obviously, I watch every game online, like via mm -hmm. the sample now pass, which is great. Um, but um, yeah, I like to get to games, occasionally catch up with people like because clearly, I, you know, I got connections there. That's really good to kind of see them in person every now and again, just say good day. And um, yeah, just just sort of be on the ground. So um, the newly named Coates Talent League, which is 
um, previously NAB League starting up in a couple of weeks. So this was the best chance before that started to try and come in and, and basically, yeah, catch up with it um, and, and see some of the, the best young talent in South Australia. Fantastic. And I've had the pleasure. I got the the sample now app and I've been keeping a track of that myself. So I can't wait to talk with you a little bit later about the women's game, but we're, we're going to stay mostly in the men's game on this. Hopefully the technical difficulties will get figured out. I'm not trying to be annoying to the Steves and the Don. I want to make sure that they have just as much of, a, of the ability to ask questions here, but I'm going to start it off, Pete. Plain and simply, this draft was quite an interesting one just because we had a lot of Victorians that had not a lot of football. So, so I asked I asked this of you, did this draft kind of go the way you thought or, or was this one that did have a few kind of twists and turns when it came to the draft and how it, how it played out? Uh, well, it was an interesting draft. Like even the top 10, um, a funny story on draft night, which I don't think many people will know unless you sort of, I guess knee deep in the draft atmosphere is um, coming into draft night. You obviously predict your top tens, do all that. Um, like Kel Toomey, who's um, the guru at afl.com.au. He obviously had his top 10. We had a different top 10. Um, and the interesting fact was we kind of hedged ourselves on the hope that Essen, Essendon were going to take Mateus Philippou because we were told early doors, that's who they were going to take basically. Um, and then later on, probably a couple of days out, it was confirming more like it was going to be Elijah Sardis. And, but we didn't want to change our top 10 because we're like, no, then it'll be the same as Cal's, which that's obviously what it ended up being. But um, what was really fascinating was when Cal did his draft video, which I uh, implore people to watch, that was really fascinating. On his draft order, he had a backup draft order of the top 10, and that was the top 10 we put out. So it shows that had... Essendon picked Philippou, then it would have gone to plan. And we kind of knew that because we kind of knew which clubs were keen on who. So as soon as Essendon picked Sardis, we knew exactly what was going to happen for the rest of the top 10. So um, that so much wasn't as predictable as some of the others. So we probably guessed up to that sort of 11, 12 mark. Fletcher was a little bit earlier than we thought, but otherwise the only other one was um, Alan sliding. So they went for, um, West Coast went for Hewitt over Allen, which was a bit of a surprise. And then Sydney playing funny buggers, which I loved. Um, uh, bidding on Harry Rouston, which you could visibly see the Giants weren't happy about that. But um, yeah, like it, it's one of those things that it, it largely went. There weren't like shocks, but it was more like we knew that it was going to go one of two ways. And you kind of went, all right, let's just put the other way, see if it happens. It didn't, but that's the way it goes. you one pick difference and suddenly we've got, we've nailed all the top 10 and you're, you're laughing. So um, it's the way it goes, but it's a, a fascinating process. Yeah, it, it very much is. Rick, you got any questions for the draft expert here? No. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, um, yeah, it seems like the draft didn't have, you know, as many surprises as, uh, as you might expect. It seems like the experts were pretty, pretty bang on for the most part. I kept a, I kept a decent track of, of Toomey's analyses and not as much as I should have, but um, yeah, you know, I normally, you know, don't, don't pay as much attention to the talk shows or the, the draft stuff heading into the off season, but no, it, it was, um, you know, Ashcroft from Brisbane is obviously the one everyone's talking about. Of course, last year, it was D Dacos, father, son, father, son this year, those guys always get the, the biggest looks or the biggest press sometimes, but uh no, yeah, it's going to be – it's a great group of, of young kids, and I'm sure it's going to be yeah. interesting to see how they develop these next few years. Yeah, it'll be quite It'll be quite interesting. Steve's the Don, you guys get everything figured out? That camera is starting to be a pain in the rear end for you guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Can you hear me good? Yep, we can hear you, and I can see you, so we're good. <laughs> you guys got any questions? Uh, no, nah, I – if anything, I'm curious about West Coast and what you think about the picks we got. I was thinking that we should draft more defensively, but we got pretty much all our midfield. I mean, I understand our midfield is getting old, but I would just be curious on your thoughts on that. Yeah, well, for, from a perspective of just looking at the quality of players, I definitely have West Coast on, like, the higher end of the, the clubs I rated their halls. Like, 
Um, Ginby was one of those that I think Ginby and Hewitt immediately refills the inside midfield. So yeah. straight away, obviously that midfield's aging a little bit. So to pick those players up, they went for those um, who are consistent players over Ed Allen. As I said, I think many expected Allen to be one of those picks. Um, Allen's probably one of those high upside, but um, lower floor type players, which we kind of like to say that effectively they could be one of the best in the crop or they could be a bit of a flop. Um, but he, where those two are very, very consistent, you know what you're going to get. You know, they're fit-wise, um, they're potentially 200-game players. Like, they're really consistent and they can just lock it in. Um, Harry Barnett was the standout ruck by the end of the year. There were a lot that there were a lot of tools coming into the year, but he was probably the one that um, exceeded expectations, along with obviously Aaron Cabman, who went at one, um, where a lot of others sort of dropped off. So he was the one that kind of not only maintained it, but went up. So he's clearly needing a ruck. He's sort of the standout one. And West Coast's had a lot of um, injuries over the years to Nick Natanui. And, and then obviously their second ruck has sort of been a bit of a um, roundabout because they kept rotating players, getting new ones, trying to find that right mix. And he's someone who can kind of play ruck and forward. So um, he can also play as that second ruck um, and then eventually develop into the number one ruck if they want. So they've got them. And then um, Bergeel and Long are both mid forwards. Long is probably a little short to play midfield at, at the top level. So he'll probably play forward. But he's, he's an incredibly skillful player, um, came out of the Pios. He's, he's really, really good in that front half of the ground. He'll provide pressure, but also be able to hit targets and be really dangerous around there. Um, he's someone who, despite taking at 58, I think he's going to be someone who um, surprises a lot of people and debuts earlier than, than others taken ahead of him. And um, Bergeel's just your tough inside mid with a, a nice burst from the stoppage and... Um, I kind of said he yeah. was sort of like the value Bailey Humphrey. Both of them played at Gippsland. Both of them burst out of the midfield. Both of them could play as a right. forward, almost like a key forward, even though they're, they're shorter. Um, he was like the value version of him. And um, certainly getting him at 29 is a good good get. We, we thought he'd get around there in that second round. So um, as a whole, um, I definitely think West Coast did well with their selections, like the players they picked. Um, they, they filled some needs. Um, right. defensively it, it comes down to whether they thought this was the best draft to have it there weren't like tons of ready-made kind of key defensive options so perhaps they went we'll, we'll look to next year or perhaps looking to trade in players potentially in the future and we'll make do for now um, right. they do have they do have some quality players still there obviously McGovern's still there Barras is still there um, so they do have those players that can stand up and obviously Barras is still quite young so um yeah, like I, I think they probably identified uh, more important needs, and that's what they went with with those selections. Definitely, for sure. And I'll I'll throw it in since he threw the West Coast question. I mean, you know, I'm I'm a diehard yeah. Sydney Swans fan, and again, Sydney didn't have a, a massive haul, but it, I, sometimes Sydney finds a way. Kinnear beats and sometimes finds a way to grab some of those diamond in the rough slash guys that not everybody's talking about so could you just really quickly for for me just a little bit go through i mean because constanti i think everybody kind of talked about is the papley mold very much very much like papley gets under your skin great around goal kicks it but after that we were, we were a little bit fuzzy because we it were some later picks so just really quickly is there a diamond in the rough that sydney get did kinnear beats and do it again and, and what kind of would you say with, with sydney's kind of um, how well do you think they did when it came to picking up guys that will just add to the depth of, of a young Swan squad? Yeah, well, first off, I think Sydney did incredibly well at annoying um, their <laughs> crosstown rivals because um, <laughs> with that pick 16, a lot of people might not have known that they wanted Constanti with that pick. So by bidding on Rouston, they effectively threw down the gauntlet to GWS. Do you want Rouston or do you want Constanti? That's effectively what they did. Then, of course, took Constanti. Um, the other funny thing was they traded Hawthorne to get... So Hawthorne moved up the order to get Weddle, um, mm -hmm. which after they'd already made the bid and done that tricky thing. Um, and then they took Vickery, who was a part of their Hawthorne Academy. So um, there was a nice little sort of uh, sideways there, um, being able to pick him up. Um, he was a, a bit more of a surprise packet for me. Um, I was expecting him probably to be that third round um, but he's a player that I can imagine Kinnear absolutely loves. Like, he's an effort player. He's got good, clean skills. He moves well around the ground. 
Um, and the same could go for Mitchell too. He's a tall winger. He, his ground coverage and endurance is terrific. Like he's able to move very well around the ground. He's, he's a bit more of a project player because he's not a high production player, but he's someone who has the size, can compete overhead. Um, he's just an incredibly competitive player, can play in multiple positions. Same with Vickery. He played on the wing and half back. So for me, they picked up a couple of incredibly hard workers and people that I think he sees upside in, where Constanti is the one that's quite obviously got upside, but he's just that bit more um, ready to kind of almost dazzle and, and dominate now, um, where Vickery and Mitchell kind of will be those uh, consistent players. Uh, and it's just a case of how much they can uh, sort of squeeze out of their potential to, to get better. Um, but for like their other picks outside the national draft, obviously they picked up a couple of tools. Will Edwards, um, incredible athlete. Like he basically runs a 2.9 20 meter sprint for a 195 plus guy, which is just ridiculous. Um, so he's just that athletic type. He's really raw. He's, he's not going to be a round one debutant or anything like that. Um, mm-hmm. He's obviously an overager, so they overlooked him the year before. Um, but he did play some VFL footy, so he's, he, he has had that senior experience. Um, Cam Owen, another um, reasonably mobile ruck, for as far as rucks go. He comes out of uh, the Tasmanian Devils program, and he, he was someone who had a really good year, improved his 2K, so that's probably another reason he got picked up. And I think if you're talking about diamonds in the rough, I think your last selection in the rookie draft, Jaden Magor, was one that um, he went at pick 31 there and it wouldn't have been out of place to see him at pick 31 in the national draft because he was sort of that uh, mid to late second rounder on, on ability. He's um, an incredible sort of forward, really clean, really smart, fantastic kick of the ball. Um, he can play midfield. The only thing was he had um, injuries at the wrong time of year. So he's... A, not able to really show what he was consistently able to do as a young one, like as a bottom major, but um, now he sort of can get into an elite program, build up his running capacity. He's someone who could really surprise if he gets to that um, sort of top level playing consistently, because he's certainly got that ability. He's not going to be a huge ball winner, but what he does with the ball uh, makes up for it. He's a, one of those 10 disposal players who could, perhaps kick two or three goals and set up another couple. So he's one of those that's very skillful and, and in the forward half, he just adds to that mix. Fantastic. So I don't know, Rick, do you want to, do you want to do the, 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 your club with the GWS there? Cause I got to say, Absolutely. I think, I think Cadman's a hell of a pickup, honestly. No. Yeah. I, I, I definitely think so as well. And uh, I know the early returns on, um, on Darcy Jones have been really positive. I know, you know, his, his new teammates really seem to be you know, impressed with his work rate and all that stuff. But, um, but no, yeah, I was definitely pleased with the draft hall that GWS got overall. And um, uh, I noticed, um, you know, you mentioned uh, guys like um, Vickery for the Swans and you also mentioned uh, coming out of the Gippsland league. So yeah, there, I, you know, you look at the draft and you look at the concentration of, country Victoria kids and Cadman's another country Victoria kid from uh, uh, ironically from greater Western Victoria playing to, you know, with GWS. So yeah. What are your thoughts on, on Cadman and Jones and the Giants crop? Yeah. uh, Well, definitely like Cadman coming into the year was someone who was rated as a first round prospect, but maybe later on he hadn't, he'd shown potential because originally he played as a more of a sort of winger, a midfielder. Um, and then he shot up, like he kind of shot up to that key position height. So then he became that contested marking key forward. Um, there's no one really in the draft that was like him or to that produced the same level of consistency that he did. Sure. Um, he, he, he won our rookie me central medal for the best player in the, um, NAB league competition. So like he had some really consistent performances, um, and, and just, you know, kicked goals, performed on the big stage for Vic country. It was really a great year from him. I know he wanted to go quite high at the start of the year. And um, to go up pick one, uh, obviously in a equalised draft, the, the question will remain, Will would Ashcroft have gone pick one if, um, you know, there wasn't that father-son? Uh, it just comes down. They've got, they've got a key forward in terms of someone they can rely on for years to come. Um, you know, he's their centrepiece um, and, and just gives them that guarantee. Um, and coming from that country region... Uh, he's sort of someone who, you know, is used to traveling, is used to being away from family and friends, things like that. Um, gives them a bit more guarantee. And, and you can see that's a theme with, with their selections, like Rouston and, and Jones. 
Rizuski is probably the, the one difference there being the Oakley player, but um, he's someone who's that high upside. They took a huge, the, the high, high risk, high reward type player. He could be anything. Um, and then McMullen, again, he's a country kid um, who basically came from Port Ferry. Um, he, um, his uh, father was Ian McMullen, who was a Collingwood um, director for years and years and years. Um, so he's got that football blood. Um, and so I, I feel like they went for a lot of tools like Cadman, Grzuski, who's sort of that medium tall height, uh, and then obviously Madden, uh, and then Gilby in, in the, as part of their zone is obviously uh, another sort of medium tall. So they gained a lot of height and then they obviously gained um, Jones and Rouston who are on the definite shorter side, um, but have those good skills and good pressure. So um, I think they came in with a plan to go for their guarantee kind of picks um, a bit of X factor in the front half um, and then go for the players that probably have a lot of upside, such as Grzuski and McMullen, who um, athletically are, are fantastic. McMullen's um, ridiculously quick um, over 20 metres and grzuski has got a remarkable vertical leap. So they've gone for players that they know um, they might not become anything, but they've also got a, a lot of potential to go above those um, who were taken before them. So I think they got their guaranteed players early and then they went for the ones that they thought, yeah, let's take a, um, a bargain on. Let's see if they can, uh, yeah, really exceed. Nice. Fantastic. It, it's always, I always love those, those, those ones that the those ones that you're like, ah, let's take a risk and see, you see what happens. So Steve's done. You guys got a question for him? Oh, yeah. I can hear you a little bit. Say that again. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Not catching it. That micro that microphone is being annoying today. <laughs> Just a little bit. Trying to ask about Elijah and just the Carlton picks in general. Say one more time. I think those other picks in general, was it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so, like, obviously, in terms of the other picks, um, just looking around, um, I, I know this will usually be a question that, that Donnie will ask in terms of who did really well and, and things like that, but I'm sure it's coming up. And um, I look, at the end of the day, I had about six clubs that I was um, incredibly pleased with uh, in terms of, like, I had them in the top group. There weren't too many that I went, oh, I'm not sure about their picks. Um, or they had later picks. Like, you look at Richmond, they had late picks, so you can't really judge them on that. Um, but the teams that, like, probably um, had picks that were in the mid-range that I really liked, I had St Kilda, West Coast, Essendon, Hawthorne, Bulldogs and North. They were the ones that had multiple picks and they just seemed to get exactly what they needed when they needed. Um, obviously, North, I, I kind of put an asterisk there because with the picks they had, they were never going to really do badly. So um, they're sort of in a league of their own. But certainly, I think St Kilda were the club that really excited me. I think Keela could be anything. Um, he's just He was potentially in the top five um, not that long ago. So he's got a really great upside. And obviously, Ollie Hotton's another one that's really, really impressed um, at junior level. I think he's got a lot of high upside. And he's someone who... Um, father played for both Carlton and Collingwood. Um, and he also had that weird story of sort of being a 50, 50, um, sort of supporter of both, which is very, um, basically unheard of here. It's, um, yeah, they, they, the <laughs> supporters hate each other for anyone who doesn't know, but yeah, they, he was 50, 50 of both. Um, and then Philip, who of course is the high upside player who, um, probably went higher, um, than you thought initially, but then he's slid down to 10 and, and they've grabbed him lower than they thought. So, um, yeah, I think St Kilda for me were probably the one if I had to pick or choose were going to be the, the pick of the lot. But, um, yeah, I think largely in terms of picks, it went to as you would expect. Obviously, later in the draft, there's always players that perhaps pop up and surprise, like Corey Wagner getting a, another chance was a little bit of a surprise. You weren't expecting it, but he, he got called up, which was great. He got to Frio, so that's really good. Um, the tools like... Phoenix Foster went to Geelong, Scully to Port. Like they started having um, a lot of those kind of tools. And I think Port were keen on Foster as, a, as that. So potentially that was one of those that they got in just before. I think McDonald would be a great value pick at Hawks. Um, 
So there's a, there's a lot of clubs there. Collingwood went for high upside as well. And obviously they got Joe Richards, who's ready-made if, if they want to slot him in. So I think every club was able to bring something out of it. Um, and I think the only club that really probably had a quiet night um, was Richmond. And, and that's only because they, they went so hard at the, the trade. They knew they weren't going to come out with too much. So they only had the two picks out of WA that they used. And um, yeah, at that draft range, it's, it's hit or miss. And um, they've got a couple of players, one high upside, Caleb Smith, um, athletically really good. And Steely Green, who's just a consistent workhorse. So um, yeah, as a whole, I think it largely went to plan. Um, there weren't too many that missed out. Um, that we're surprised about, but um, yeah, I think a lot of clubs will come away happy from that draft. Yeah, it was very interesting, and I, I got to ask Pete, my, my prototypical one that I love asking, who's somebody third round or after that you could see having the two hundred game career that that might surprise somebody that's going to be that that steal the one that when they do the reordering of the draft is going to find themselves in the top ten. Yeah, uh, well. See, that's the interesting one because there wasn't much of a third round after. There's only about 10 or 15 picks in that in that back end. Um, we'll throw this, how me, about we throw the second round in? That, that'll make it a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, for me, I think the, the obvious one who was value is Alwyn Davy Jr. I think that he um, was far higher on ability and he just slid for one reason or another, like father-son. Obviously, they knew that they were going to take him and he just kind of slid right down the order. So I think that he's someone who could have a fantastic career. I think he, he's got a bit more than his dad did. So I think that he could go beyond him. Um, the other one who I think um, could be an incredible player if everything works is Lockie Cowan out of Carlton. I think that he's someone who he went to pick 30. Um, he's just got a super boot, natural um, leadership. He, he captained the Devils and he kind of um, he's just one of those players that's just ready to play at the top level. And, and we've seen that in the practice matches. He's um, been able to play for Carlton in those and, and uh, held his own. So I, I think there are a couple that, um, for me, really stand out as, as great value picks. And you've obviously, from another end, you've got Braden George. If he stays fit, he's far better than 26 where North Melbourne took him. He, he's a clear sort of top 15 prospect. So very similar to Josh Rochelle. Um So... Uh, yeah, he's someone I think from a high upside. If he can stay fit, he'll be another one that um, defies his uh, order. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was going to mention um, the Davy twins just because, yeah, you know, talking about sons of guns, the father son choices. Um, I know Jaden, um, I think he was the one of them did an ACL, and I know he was going to slip uh, because of that. But yeah, no, they played, um, I don't know, they played some really high level footy, uh, both, you know, uh, in, in the, uh, in the NAB league and up north in the NT, which is of course where they're from. So yeah, I know their dad played what, like seven, eight AFL seasons, something like that. So yeah, you know, you, you, you'd like to think that they'll uh, at least match that. So um, I'm excited to see them. I think they're going to be great fits at Essendon. Yeah. There's a couple both Essendon and Brisbane, I think really, really capitalized on the father son ability. I mean, Brisbane, I mean, it's, you can't argue getting Will Ashcroft again, best player, but then getting Jesper, I mean, Oh my gosh, like that. It's, it's hard to argue that the Brisbane lions didn't have not only an incredible draft, but an incredible off season uh, when it comes to it. I mean, just it's there, they, they, they kind of scare me uh, this upcoming year. So, and then Pete, you know, my other normal question that I asked just, just for us, because again, we're all learning footy again, like this, give us some of the names that we're going to hear next year, because I know, I know there's Will Harley, I think is, is the, is the guy they're Harley talking Reed. about or Harley Reed. I knew it was Harley something. Was, yeah. Yeah. So I know he's being talked about as number one, but who are, who are some of the big names that you're looking at next year to be definitely high on play on teams draft boards? Yeah, um, so for me, uh, obviously, like Harley Reid's the clear standout, I think. He's the one that um, everyone's going to be talking about as sort of the, if you like, the Will Ashcroft, the one that sort of stands out as the the number one uh, pick for this year. Um, but then there's also, there's a, there's a bit of depth in this group. Um, there's another Reid, Zach Reid, who I really like out of Gippsland Power. Um, he's someone who's just that really tall, athletic type, uh, he could kind of do anything. Um, he can play anywhere. He's someone that um, I think from a key position option is fantastic. Um, if you look over in WA, Dan Curtin won the uh, uh, best player in the futures match on the grand final day. He's someone who 
I think from a key position perspective, it's the one to pick at the moment. So again, he could be like a Cadman that pushes up and the club takes him um, perhaps, you know, pick one or two because they need a key position player. He's someone there. Um, Zane Dersma, obviously um, the brother of Xavier. He's, he's uh, a bit more developed in terms of he's a bit lankier, even um, a touch taller, um, but he, he can move really well, plays forward and mid. Um, he's ready made. He'll probably go higher than where Xavier did. Um, so you've got those guys. And then of course you've got Ashton Moyer out at Glenelg. He's another one that um, he's probably the, the biggest challenger at the moment to Harley Reid's top spot. Um, just, X factor personified, really. He can do anything. Incredible vertical leap, great kick. He's someone who um, plays as that forward. Um, he's a bit undersized compared to others uh, that place of that key forward role. He's about that 186, 187 mark. Um, but he, he's just brilliant with his leap and, and someone with high upside. And if you're someone who likes the Tassie prospects, Colby McCurch is the one out of the Apple Isle that's going to be a, a good one to watch. He's uh, definitely the, the best player coming up this year. Um, so he's another one uh, to keep an eye on. So um, there's a few there. And if you uh, Northern Academy prospects, just quickly, Jed Walter is the one to um, keep in mind there. He's key forward uh, out of the allies. Pretty comparative, I guess you'd say, to Charlie Kerno. So very exciting for the Suns. He's a part of their academy. So they could be in with a really good haul this year because um, they've got a couple of other kids as well. Um, that, are, that are coming along nicely. So um, along with him and then just finally, I'd probably chuck in uh, Patrick Wickett out of the Eagles in South Australia. He's just that incredible big body uh, forward who came in and, and played reserves last season and just dominated. Like he kicked eight goals in, in a game, nine goals in a game. Um, just literally, um, yeah, killed him against adults. So uh, he's someone who, again, he's that little undersized for a key position. He's about that 190 mark, but... He's such a big body and he's someone who um, moves reasonably well for a, a bulky player. So, um, yeah, there's quite a few to um, watch this season, uh, a bit to like. So looking forward to uh, when it all kicks off. Yeah, it'll be quite interesting. So I, I think that is going to do it for our draft discussion. And Pete, if you if you don't mind, I've got a, I've got a few fun questions for the season preview for the AFL. If you want to hop on and throw your opinion on it, I'd love to have you. Yeah, sure. Awesome, awesome. So let's let's jump into it, Rick and, and Steve's in the dawn. Hopefully, we can we can get something figured out here. My my apologies on this on this technical difficulties, guys. I mean, I, I really want to get your your guys's um your guys's opinions on this because I know you guys watch a lot of the footy and, and I, I love that. So we're we're gonna hop into it. Season preview, right off the bat. I want you to think of this after everything that we've seen, draft preview, all of all of the changes. Who do you think is the biggest riser this season? Who's that team that you think is going to be the biggest improver? So, Rick, we'll start with you. Who do you think is going to be that team that's going to be talked about a lot like Collingwood last year? Hmm. I mean, in terms of Collingwood exceeding expectations under a brand new coach, I mean, I'd be way too biased if I picked the Giants, but I do think Kingsley was a great fit there. Um, in terms of, like, contenders who can immediately become, like, flag contenders, it's tempting to say Frio. I know um, I saw something from Justin Longmere the other day saying he, <laughs> he felt they could have been a little more aggressive in, uh, in, in free agency, but I think they did pretty well and they drafted pretty well too. Of course, Luke Jackson was the big, uh, the big trade target that they got. Of course, he's a Perth guy going back home. They got Jager O'Meara from Hawthorne and of course, Nat Fife is probably going to be in, you know, a different role again this year. So yeah, I think the Dockers, I think they could be top four, you know, proof is in the pudding. Obviously they just got back to finals last year. You know, it was probably too uh, premature to expect them to contend straight away, but you know, they're, they're on the right track. Yeah. It'll be definitely interesting. Pete, who do you think is going to be the biggest riser this season? Uh, yeah. I, I think Richmond will go back up and, and be another contender. Um, they've, They've basically traded to say, here we go, we're rolling the dice. They don't have too many years left in, in Jack Rewalt and Trent Cochin, who keeps on going. Um, so I think there's going to be a time where it sort of just tips a little bit. They've started by bringing in the likes of Taranto and Hopper. They've kind of rejuvenated that mid just a little bit to buy them sort of that five, six years um, of two incredible midfielders in there. Um, 
But I think that when the group that have led them through their premiership success start to drop off, they know that it's probably going to be a little bit down the bottom or, or towards the bottom. So they've kind of counteracted that with players that are younger, mid-20s, that can come in and do a job. Um, but in saying that, they're also uh, keeping themselves in contention because they know they're sort of best 22 players that are coming in and um, able to perform really strongly. So I think that they're going to be the team to watch. Um, and in terms of outside the eight, I think you've got to be aware of your your Carlton's and your, your Port Adelaide's as well. I think they were just about there last year and they had a lot of things sort of go wrong for one reason or another. Um, if they can have a fully fit kind of squad, then I think they're, there are a couple to keep an eye on. I, I'm 100% with you. I think I was going to say Port Adelaide. You kind of took my thunder just the tiniest bit because I just think last year they got snake bitten in that first five games of the season. I Honestly, if you look at them, the way their second half went after they got through that first five games, they started playing some really good footy and they were just absolutely just destroyed with injury last year. So I think King, I think Ken Hinckley and Port Adelaide are going to be the team outside the eight. I think Carlton was kind of just, they got, they got snake bitten. They just had a couple of bad results late in the year. I think Carlton is the almost given that I think a lot of people are saying that given team outside of the eight that makes it in, but I keep an eye on Port my is my thing and then i'm gonna go to it who's your biggest slider and i'm gonna jump right off the bat honestly i i worry for collingwood because i think collingwood rode the magic a lot last year i think they really really benefited and they had a lot of games everybody's like well they play great close footy yes but you're playing close footy against teams that honestly they had a close game against essendon they had close games against north melbourne you had close games against teams in the bottom part of the a in the bottom part of the latter, that's not good. You should be winning those games by more. Again, maybe it was their style of footy. Plus, I think Jack McRae's style has been figured out. I think a lot of coaches are going to go to work on that and they're going to change it. So I think Collingwood is the team that if I, and I know there's parts of Swans and Melbourne that are like, darn you coach. But I really think Collingwood is my team. I'm a little worried about that. They're, they made four last year. It wouldn't shock me if they fall out of the eight this year, because I think teams have figured them out. So Rick, who do you think is going to be your biggest slider? Um, well, just to piggyback off that, I think the pies will, will slip a bit, but I, I still have them uh, probably making the eight. I do think picking up Dan McStay was a great move on their part. You know, we, we know how they've sometimes struggled to, to score. They got Bobby Hill as well. But I think in terms of overall, who's going to slip, I, I think it's now or never for the Western Bulldogs, quite frankly. Uh, I, I know people are gonna, some people are going to hate me for this, but you have to wonder if Luke Beveridge might have stayed a little too long. Like, I think they're just, they just seem like they're a team that's constantly on the margins. I know they've had injury issues themselves. Yeah, they're overall very well coached. We can't say enough about Bond and Pelly. And, but again, they're losing Dunkley. You know, they, they've lost a lot of players. Um, Josh Bruce wasn't the same, missed half a season due to injury. Ryan Gardner still can't stay healthy. And I think I think we are going to see a, a better season from their young kids. Like, you know, everyone's talking about Luke Darcy. Of course, he's another father-son guy. Um, you know, Hugo Hagen, I, I still think he's got a lot of potential. But overall, the doggies, you know, they seem like they're both overachieving and underachieving because – a lot of times they're a team that has to scrap and claw just to get to the eight, but you know, they can still upset pretty much anyone on a good day. So I wonder if Bevo is, you know, uh, still really, you know, I wonder if they can still win another flag under him. I'd like to think they can, but it's just, I think last year's results were definitely disappointing in the end. And I almost worry, are they too tall forward now with, with the ad, with the addition of lob, that'll be interesting. So so, I, I mean, I feel horrible with this. D's done. Do you think we got the microphone enough? Or, you know, what are you guys thinking on this? Biggest riser, biggest slider. What are you guys thinking? Can, can you hear us good? Yep, I can hear you. All right. So, biggest riser for me, probably very biased, but I think West Coast is going <laughs> to improve a lot this year. I think – I know Amir Phil is a big problem. We got a lot of old guys – Last year was just a disaster for us with all the injuries and uh, COVID and everything like that. But I think with Oscar Allen back, I'm putting a lot on Oscar Allen's back. I do think he's going to be a great impact for us. I think the young midfield 
mixed with a few vets that can really teach them the game and uh, help them improve a little bit faster is going to be nice. Uh, I don't I don't know about if we're going to make the eight, but we're going to come out of the bottom four, and I think that's a good enough improvement for right now until we get a little bit more experience on our side. Okay. Just the tiniest bit, unfortunately. Can you hear me? There I go. Turn it just a little this bit. We're getting a little bit of muffle. Yeah, you're you're cutting in and out there, yep. Steve. So GWS, right? I think they, I agree with you, Rick, as uh, as far as them being uh, big improvers next year. I think they they underachieved a lot last year. Obviously, they had the whole coaching turmoil and uh, that looming over their back. Um, but they have a lot of talent on the team, and I just really didn't understand quite why they finished so low at the bottom. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they play with now they have, like, one captain now. They have, like, three captains last year, and now they have the sole captainship. And whether you agree or not, Toby Green being at the helm, it'd be interesting to see how things change in that aspect. Mm -hmm. um, I like, I also was disappointed with Hawthorne really over the last two years that we've been watching footy. Hawthorne has been able to be some of the best teams regardless of what they've had on their list. Um, so I do think they, they've been learning over the couple of years to how to win. Um, they had, got decimated off injury off halfback last year, which I think um, is where they kind of, mm -hmm. uh, I think their bread and butter can be. Um, so with Will Day, I know they switched him out, um, but MP and CJ, and I think those are like big impact players, you know what I mean? So with them healthy, I would like to see, uh, I would like to think that the Hawks would be a lot better. Um, and I also agree with Port too. I, I was disappointed Port just dropped way too many games last year. Um, and they've been like at the minor premiership, they won that recently. And I just think they have too much talent with it. And then uh, they, have, they have the addition of Jason Horn Francis. And just in the midfield, they have way too much talent. And I don't think um, that they'll finish just as bad as they did this past year. Um, so I'm looking for those three teams in particular to rise up on the ladder. Yeah, I think Orazio Fantasia is one of those. Keep an eye on him. If they can keep him healthy, he helps Marshall and Dixon be better because he, he gives that ability. And Junior Rioli, I, I know I'm not trying to sting you here, Don, but <laughs> Junior Rioli becoming that other – uh, small forward in that forward line, I think is only going to help them. It's going to take some ease off of Georgiades a little bit. So I, I think Port's going to be scary. That and the fact that having a lot, having those home games, if they can establish themselves winning those home games and then steal a few on the road, I think Port's going to be a tough team. So, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have some fun with this. I love so many of these during these preseasons. They ask this, I want your boldest prediction something you think that's going to happen that nobody is not an obvious one, your boldest prediction. So Pete, I know you're a draft guy, you're a numbers guy. What's your boldest prediction this year in the AFL? Uh, boldest prediction. Jeez. Um, well, based off this conversation, I actually think, or at this podcast, I actually think Collingwood will prove people wrong. I know I'm a little biased in that, but mm -hmm. I think that, like I'm not normal last year, the whole year and everyone in the office can kind of attest to this. Cause the whole year I'm like, we're going to lose this game. We're going to lose this game. I'm generally someone who I was expecting us to miss finals to all that. Um, mm -hmm. Wasn't confident whatsoever. They just kept scraping over the line. And um, one of the other guys who writes for me, Michael is a Carlton fan. And um, he's like, geez, must be nice to go win 11 games in a row. Like that must suck so much. Um, but, and then he was in the car when we had the round 23 game too. So that was a lot of fun um, as that was playing. Um, but um, yeah, for me, I think that they've got every potential to, um, I, I think they could win it all. I don't think they're the necessarily the best team, but um, the only reason I'm more excited about this year is because they've drafted the positions they for lack of a better word, sucked in last year. Mm -hmm. They they lacked a key position forward who they've got in McStay, who doesn't need to be a world beater. He doesn't need to be Charlie Kernow because Collingwood's got a bit more depth in the forward. So I think that all he's got to do is create a contest and stop um, the undersized Majek getting bullied. Um, we needed a bit more skill going inside 50. They brought in um, Hill, who's got that ability. Um, he's obviously not for whatever reason, quite clicked at the Giants, had injuries, et cetera. But he brings that pressure. He brings that skill. And um, I don't know if you saw the game against Hawthorne, but just him running down the field, like from the wing to half forward and then just drilling a pass in, 
Um, I think our game style suits McStay too, more than it did at um, Brisbane. So I think those two in the forward half. And then Mitchell coming into the midfield is exactly what we need. Now, I've, I've never been a massive Tom Mitchell fan because he's effectively a first possession handball out. That's That's his game. That's all it is. But luckily, that's exactly what Collingwood needs because we've got heaps of those second possession, run-in, um, kick players, and we've had to try and develop players to almost be that contested ball winner or first possession winner because Taylor Adams has been injured um, so much lately. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, um, other players, like you don't want your Scott Pendlebury's and all that being that first possession winner or Dacos's because they're the ones you want with ball in the hand kicking forward. And I think Tom Mitchell just does that. All we needed was a player to win the ball at ground, handball it to one of them, and they run off. That's all we needed. And I think between those um, additions, I feel like we're going to go better. And, I mean, knowing the way that footy goes, you're probably you're setting yourself up to be disappointed because that's always what happens. But for the first time in a long time, I'm probably the most optimistic about a season because I generally will go in not expecting much, mainly because... Um, Whenever we do play finals, we kind of find a new way of losing them closely. I would just, if we're going to lose them, I wouldn't mind getting belted every now and again, but we just find a way to lose them in heartbreaking fashion. So for me, it's, it doesn't matter till you get to the finals. Um, but I do have confidence that I think they're actually going to um, at least match their performance this year. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if they punch above their weight and go. Um, another step forward and potentially make that grand final and who knows from there. But um, I do have confidence in them because I, I feel like it was McRae's coaching that turned everything around. It sparked a bit and just getting those guys in, I think they're going to go a lot better and, and surprise people. And, and this has come from someone who's usually pretty uh, n- not too optimistic basically about, about the season. So I am a bit more optimistic this year. So I think that'll probably be my big thing that they'll go even better. Mm, the pessimistic Collingwood fan. So, all right, all right, Rick. What, what's your bold prediction? What's the one thing we'll look back and go: Is he right or is he wrong? Hmm. Uh, I, I, I don't feel like this is too outside the box or too obvious. I am picking Lockie Neal to win a second round this year. And right. uh, the reason I say it is just because, um, you know, again, we talked about Brisbane winning the offseason, drafting great. They got some great additions um, uh, in, in free agency as well. Of course, the big headline, was it last week or two weeks ago? can't remember. But yeah, Zorko stepping down as captain. Harris Andrews and Lockie Neal are now the new co-captains. And, you know, Neal is just, you know, he's a workhorse. He's a guy who always rises to the occasion. And I think, um, you know, he had, I, I can't remember how many 40 possession games he had last year, but he had a couple. And, um I think uh, you know he's definitely going to be you know in, in the in the front runner position. You know he'll be named amongst you know your Cripses and your Mitchells and your other guys who are always up there. But um, you know I think Neil can can definitely get it back this year. Awesome, awesome. Steve's done. Got to got any bold predictions? Uh, well, if you would have asked me like a month ago, I would have said. Zach Williams living up to his contract that we offered him, but because he got injured again, I can't say that. Um, Darn ACL. Yeah, yeah, I know it's it's rough. Um, I don't know, man. I think I guess I'll say that we might actually get a Makai bowl this year between uh, <laughs> Harry and, and Ben actually being able to play, considering that they've never been able to play a game yet. Right. Um, but now I don't really have any outstanding predictions. Um, I'm really trying to think of something. Um, some for some reason I'm thinking uh, Ben King will come back and he'll be like a very good player on a, as far as putting goal putting up uh, goals on the board. Uh, I want to see if he's as impactful as Max King. I know he doesn't. Um, you know he's got a lot. To, he doesn't have a lot to work with over there in Gold Coast. So uh, I'll just say that I think that he'll be up there in the goal scoring list. He'll be. Um, he'll get a lot of respect this year after the injuries that he had to deal with. All right, so as far as something really bold, I think I'm going to go Turn it a little bit. As far as something <laughs> bold, I'm going I'm to go with Geelong missing the eight. Uh, Whoa, that's that a bold one. <laughs> that's the biggest <laughs> one so far. 
I, I know that's crazy. I know they're one of the most consistent teams to make the eight, but I think – I mean, they, they lost their captain. They lost, I think, one of their main pieces to their team that helped everything run smooth. Uh, and their, the rest of their core players getting old, Hawkins, Dangerfield. Uh, so I've been expecting them to fall off ever since I've been watching footy, and they haven't fell off yet. And I think they just peaked last year when they were. And, yeah, that's my prediction. It's long out of the eight. He's going Super Bowl the time. I, I love that. I absolutely <laughs> love that. So I honestly, if, if I have a bold prediction, I, I, I'm not going to go as I'm not going to go as far as the Don with Geelong. But I think honestly, Gold Coast. Keep an eye on Gold Coast. I just have this feeling the way Wits is playing. Tuke Miller, I know, may be injured for the early part of the season, but this young group, I just there's something about them that I like. I, I, I forget it. I'll do. I'll do my goal. I think Gold Coast makes finals this year. I, I'm going to do it. That's my bold prediction. I think Gold Coast makes the finals this year. This young roster, Wits being in the middle, being in the middle as their ruckman. If they can get Tuke Miller healthy, that is a dangerous midfield. If Raul can get back to his Raul powers and those youngsters playing well, so that's my bold prediction. I think Gold Coast makes the finals this year so now we'll go from that that's the bold now we'll go to the obvious what's your lock of the year what's your one thing you know that's going to happen this season rick we'll start with you what's the one thing you know is going to happen this year buddy franklin will kick at least one goal <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I, I, I maybe think, you're going um, out on a limb on that one <laughs> No, I, I mean, I, I saw something the other, the other day saying, you know, he's he is starting to show his age in preseason a bit. He, his workload is probably going to be limited again this year, but he's Buddy Franklin. You know, he's a legend. As we all know, we're, he kicked a thousand goals. Uh, he hit, or he kicked us a thousand last year. And um, of course, we might never see that again in footy. So can't say much more about Buddy Franklin, but I, I think it's a. Uh, it's pretty much guaranteed that he'll get at least one this year. So. All right. Steve's done. What, what do you guys, what's your lock? What's your lock? What's the one thing that's going to happen this season? Uh, my lock is, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. All right. My lock is the Coleman winner will not be a constant. <laughs> <laughs> three years in <laughs> Okay. Don? All right. All right. Back to the West Coast. <laughs> I think all right, so one thing I think for sure is gonna happen is Nick Mack is not gonna play in every game this year for sure. Uh, but I do have a positive one. I think Oscar Allen is gonna be our leading goal kicker if he stays in the forward position all year. Nice. Okay. Pete, what's your lock of the year? I can't work out if this is a lock or it's probably more of a it's more of a surprise one. But one that I'm more confident about is Cameron McKenzie to win the Rising Star out of Hawthorne. McKenzie, interesting. He's going to be the one. He's going to be the one that surprises because he'll be best twenty-two all year. Mm-hmm. He will have less attention than than Ashcroft. Um, he will. I, I think he's just someone who fits that perfectly. And watching him on the weekend. I think that that was the confirmation for me that out of all those sort of top 10 draft picks and all that, I think he's the one that's going to slide under the radar. Um, so I think that he's someone who will have massive responsibilities, but still be shielded by the fact that Hawthorne's strength is having those inside balls like in Newcomb and your Warple. Um, I don't think Hawthorne will go crash hot this year um, and, and they could realistically win the spoon. I think they'll probably be in the bottom four, but I think that he's going to be a massive shining light. Um, and I think that he will really Im- impress. Um, so I'm going to go with that, even though that's more of a, oh, well, it's obviously a bit more of a limb than, than some of the others. But um, yeah, I, I think that that's definitely from a player perspective. I think that it won't be as obvious as last year where Dacos won it and everyone assumes it's Ashcroft. Mm-hmm. Um, even though he's a front runner, I, I just have a feeling McKenzie might win it. Fantastic. So, and, and I'll do two and I'll do two. I'll, I'll take a little bit of inspiration from the Don here. I'm going to do one as the Sydney, as the, the diehard Sydney supporter. I think Sydney makes finals. I think they break this 
supposed curse of teams that get destroyed in the grand final. I think Sydney's in the eight, and I think they make it to at least the prelim this year. I think that's my lock. I just think that young core is really, really solid. Yes, Melbourne is good. Yes, Brisbane is good. Yes, Geelong is good. But I think Sydney, the growth, I think will help them. And then my non-Sydney supporting one, and the Steez is going to love me, I think Carlton is the team that's going to be the outside team that does the most damage come finals. I think they're in the eight, and I think they potentially could steal a Melbourne, a Geelong, or a Brisbane's shot in that preliminary final. I think they're going to be there. They're so good, so solid. And with Mackay and Kerno, as long as they can stay healthy, that is a duo that it was very, very difficult to stop last year. So my lock, I think Carlton make the preliminary final. And I think Sydney breaks it. I think Sydney breaks that little go and they go a little bit better in the finals than most teams that didn't do so well in a grand final the year before. So normally I would do the eights, but I think that would take forever. So we're just going to break it down to this. Let's have a little bit of fun. We're going to fast forward to the last week in September. Who are the two teams you think are going to be playing in the grand final? This year, we'll start with Pete. Who are the two teams that are going to be fat battling for the grand final this year come the end of the season? Uh, I reckon it'll be, well, after my prediction, when I said Collingwood go one or better, I'd better go Collingwood. Um, and I'll, um, <laughs> just to back up that one to keep me safe. Um, and then I'm raffling out of three teams. Um, I think I will go with Geelong. Because I think that I think that they're gonna go there one more year. I kind of I agree um, with the sense that they're gonna drop off. I just think it'll be next year. I think they're gonna be they're gonna be fine this year, and then next year they're gonna plummet. I think that's that's my sort of prediction. Um, the other two, obviously Melbourne, Brisbane. So I think that yeah, I think I'll go Geelong, Collingwood, because um, I think that would be the biggest story of the three if it happened. Okay, Rick, who do you, who do you got playing in the grand final? I would say Melbourne is going to get back there this year. I think, um, you know, no one's happy about how last year ended uh, at the D's. And, um, you know, they've they've got a great system under Simon Goodwin. And I think they'll definitely uh, be pounding on the door again. Uh, I think it'll be Melbourne versus either Geelong or Brisbane. I think Brisbane is also a team, you know, they've, they're, they're kind of in prove it mode because, you know, Everyone knows Chris Fagan has done an amazing job with that rebuild. They've got so much talent on that list. There's no excuse for them not to at least get past the prelim this year. I reckon um, they will break through. Um, but again, Brisbane, you know, obviously, uh, as we all know, grand finals at the G. Brisbane, you know, are they really going to be able to win on the road? I think that's the big question for them because we know how loud the GABA can get. We know that the fans are back. Everyone's getting around the Lions up there, but can they win at the MCG? That's going to be huge. And Geelong, they've been there. They've done it. They know the drill. I think you'd be silly to not have them at least in your top four. Four, sorry. <laughs> uh, and um, I think uh, I think just in general, you know, like you, you just be silly to bet against them. So kind of like with what Pete was saying, you know, any one of those three I think could win the flag. Collingwood, sorry, Pete. I can see them in the top four. I just don't see them uh, getting to the to the granny this year. So, okay, Steve's done. Who you guys got in the grand final? Who you guys got playing off in the grand final? All right, so for sure, I think Brisbane is going to make it uh, to granny. Other than that, I think it's a toss up between Melbourne. I really like Melbourne. If it'll is crazy, young, and just tough to beat. Um, I can I can see Richmond sneaking in there. I think if they play like they can play all year, like the great pressure, the uh, just the pace they play with the ball, I think Shine's going to get a lot better. Uh, I think they have a, a good enough core to make it to the Grannies. I would like to see that. I think that would be an interesting game. I really enjoyed their games in the finals last year. Um, but, yeah, so either Brisbane for sure and either Melbourne or Richmond. Okay. Right. Steve, who do you got in the grand final? Uh, I guess I'll just jump on the next question. Uh, Brisbane, I feel confident with. 
-hmm. Turn it just a little bit. A little closer. <laughs> All right. So I got Brisbane and Melbourne as well. Um, I think Brisbane really just has the talent on the list. Uh, I think they were disappointing last year, um, considering how they fared in the finals. I think uh, getting Gunston was a big deal. Uh, they lost McStay, but they got Gunston. It's like you really didn't lose too much there, um, especially with the additions of Ashcroft and, and, and Dunkley, uh, considering at the minutes it was already pretty good. Um, I had some issues with Harris Andrews and his performance at, at last year, but I think if he, you know, he returns to back to his uh, top key defender days, I think they'll just really be a problem that they have to deal with. Uh, Melvin speaks for themselves. They already won the championship, already won the premiership, uh, have the crazy midfield, the luxury of having Oliver and the luxury of having uh, Petrarca and Max Don just got Grundy. So it's like, I don't really see them falling off any worse than they did last year. They have tendencies to play down to their competition, but uh, I think when it comes to the top talent they have and, and when their wheels gets rolling, it's hard to stop them. Um, I do like other teams. Like I do like, like he, he mentioned Richmond. I do like the potential of Richmond. I don't think that they'll quite win it. Um, you know, I do like Carlton, but I appreciate the optimism, Donnie, but they just have to show me, man. Like I got, I went through a roller coaster of emotions with them last year. I think they, they're up there with talent with these top teams, but they just have to get it done. Mm -hmm. um, but I think as far as pedigree speaks, like you can only go with those two teams to be comfortable other than Geelong. Um, but I think the other two teams are just going to be pushing the bar a little bit further. Yeah. It'll be very, it'll be very, very interesting. Again, I'm one of those. When, if, if you, if you make me pick my grand finals, it's one of those. I, I like the old adage. Maybe it's the coach in me defense wins championships. I love Brisbane, but I worry about their defense core with Marcus Adams being out this year that I think, yes, they've got that brilliant midfield. They've got a, a forward line that is absolutely deadly on its day, but defensively, they, they, they worry me a little bit. So I think it's going to be Geelong and Melbourne in the grand final. Both are very solid defensively. Both can score. We'll see if Melbourne can find their issues that they had going forward. I think Tommy McDonald being healthy and Van Ruin is getting a lot of talk in many of the episodes that in many of the shows that I'm hearing. I think Melbourne bounces back this year. Can they keep May and Lieber on the field? If either of those guys go, then Melbourne gets a little sketchy in the back, especially May. May seems to be that anchor for them. So I look at it again. Footy is a weird, weird thing. One injury could could change a season, but right now, if you look at it on paper, going into it, Melbourne, Geelong, and I think the preliminary finals will be Brisbane will get there. I just think they'll fall a little, they'll just fall a little short. And then that fourth spot, I think it's going to be up between a few teams. Um, I, I, interesting to see. I think Carlton, Will Liam Jones's addition and, and some of the stabilities of their defensive core will it change? Will Zach Williams' loss be as effective as it was last year? We'll have to see. Sydney, do they bounce back after what many people say is a flogging that many teams don't come back from? Uh, so we'll have to see. Can they come back because they really didn't do much in this offseason? So it'll be fascinating. So I, I'm, I'm, this is a season that honestly, I think there's 12 to 14 teams that can make finals and it could be bonkers. I think the bottom four are going to make or break some team seasons, because if you lose to a bottom four side, it could absolutely destroy your chances of making finals this year. So this is going to be an absolutely incredible year. Gentlemen, this has been a fantastic conversation. I truly, truly appreciate you coming on, especially Pete sitting at a hungry Jacks on his way to Adelaide, having the ability to sit here and join us. I appreciate this, Pete. So before we leave the end of the episode here, I just want to let everybody know, unfortunately, with Ross's ability not to go in, I'm going to send it out here, especially to you two gentlemen, both Rick Steves and the Don. I need some co-hosts to join me for some of the AFL reviews this year. So I'd like to throw out that invitation. If you'd like to join me to review each of the rounds of this season, I would love to be able to communicate and figure out a time that we can talk around as the season goes on. So I'm throwing it out. Rick would love to have you on in a later season. Steve's done. I'd like to have both of you on, maybe even as well, including your friend there that's raising his hand. I would love to have Unfortunately, he's far enough from the microphone. <laughs> so, but actually, I, again, gentlemen, I genuinely. Uh, you actually had a up, question man. for you in regards to uh, AFL. Sure, go ahead. Uh, so I'm actually new to sport. Thanks to my brothers over here. You know, Steve's and Adon, of course. Uh, 
you sound like you're pretty experienced and I just wanted to know like if you're a beginner in the game, what type of advice would you want to give to somebody who's just starting out fresh? Rick, uh, Rick, do you want to answer this question too? Oh, uh, I don't want to steal your thunder there, Donnie. <laughs> um, I mean, no, I mean hey, you're just, hey, you're free, just as anyone experienced can answer, as me. Like, I, I, like I'm an athlete, you know, I, I love the sport, man. I was actually about mm -hmm. to do rugby, but AFL is, that's, that's above. Okay. AFL is above rugby. Okay, well, right, right. Well, it takes here, a little here, bit more talent to do AFL, you know what I mean? Here, here's the thing though, it, it, it is it is such a unique game, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bloat Rick a little bit. This gentleman had the opportunity to play in Australia with Australians. So I, I'm gonna let Rick first answer this because I'm not the athlete that Rick is, I'm more of the coach, I'm more of the this that the, the strategic type of person when it comes to it so rick as a player what what advice would you give to a rookie starting off playing footy well i mean you know i, I first picked up footy back in like 2015 2016 i actually did come from a rugby background and thought i was like oh wait aussie rules now this is just you know next level um so sorry man what was your name again <laughs> i'm sorry tony tony yeah yeah i go by price afl my last name's price you know that's, that's right fine. right no, yeah, I've seen you on, on some of the live streams that Steve and Don have done, but yeah, nice to yes, meet you. Yes, yes. Yeah, and um, no, it's great that you've, they've discovered footy. I mean, it's, you know, an obscure sport over here for sure, but the people who are into it are really into it. And yeah, man, you just have to be a sponge. Like, you know, there's always going to be things, you know, bad habits that you pick up along the way and you know, you're you going to need to iron them out because, you know, you don't have the benefit of starting off when you're, six seven years old playing Auskick. you know it's we're all you know in in the states at least we're all you know right, right. picking up this foreign sport uh one one little piece at a time but not i mean like it's you know watching games is huge you know you know breaking down film and just kind of seeing you know like the finer points of the techniques you know kicking right. rock, releasing okay all right hey I'll, i'm taking that i'm taking everything you're saying Rick. yeah all right i'm receiving it all right let me ask you another question and, and then I, another thing that I would say too is don't get frustrated when you make a mistake because this this is a ga this is a game uh, this is a game of mistakes. The mm -hmm. biggest thing that you could go is I think we're all used to the American society when like when you watch a quarterback in, in the in the NFL or something like that they they like they react when they make a mistake. The biggest thing is you don't have enough time because this is a three sixty sport that's constantly going. You yeah. can't focus on when you make when you when you bugger something up because. If you do, you could actually mess up something further because if you, you react, then you're not there defensively to, for tackle pressure to maybe get a holding the ball and then get a reshot of doing it again. So the biggest right. thing is don't focus on the mistakes. The mistakes are going to happen. I mean, we're not right. AFLers. I mean, uh, many of the people over here in the States, we fuck up a lot. It's going to happen. We're not the AFL. Right. So it, as much as we watch it, the biggest thing I tell many we will be. That, that start off is – is We're gonna gonna be gonna the AFL. you're gonna fuck up it's going to happen so the yes, biggest thing is sure. don't let it don't let it affect you so I agree. all right well, well we'll get off of the show here if you have any more questions so so we won't waste any more of yeah because you're gonna be asking all stuff now. <laughs> so that ladies and gentlemen that is going to do it for our off season slash preseason slash draft review show thank you for watching it again this will now be donnie's disposals going further again gentlemen thank you for joining me today it's been an awesome awesome pleasure and i hope to talk with you more again soon again keep an eye out we still have off-season supporter series chats coming up this and afl round one will be coming up very soon thank you for watching we'll be back again very very soon. Here's the song.